Aegis Online Alpha 4.0 is here, so it's time for an update. I'm Kale the Quick with Easter Egg Productions. Let's go over the changes. Now, we have a parenting system set in place. When you drop an item onto another, it will automatically parent itself to that item, sticking them together. This parenting works with the Aegis here and the new subgrids, which lets you make smaller map sections that you can move around. The color and name settings for your Wisp have been moved to the main menu and now everyone's name and color is in a list in the upper right of the screen. To make room for that, the map loading is on the campaign menu when the server is running. A simple zombie monster has been added as a built-in mini graphic and set up with the tinting system for you to modify. Simple Python scripts can be put on items to help automate gameplay, play animations, sounds, and floating text. This is the latest and least stable feature. If you'd like to try breaking our latest and least stable feature for yourself, our supporters over on Patreon at or over $10 can download the latest alpha and distribute it to their friends to try out. Alright, that's everything in short. Now for the long of it. Grids. Make a grid with the new MT Grids tool. Check, make on click, put in a name, material, and dimensions. Uh, try to keep the grids as small as you need. Right now it procedurally generates the mesh and there is a size limit. Uh, once you put all that in, just click on the world and your grid is made. Once it's in, you can select it and its stats will populate the readout on the left of the screen. Here you can change things like the tint. I have set up a simple grid pattern as the default grid material. Currently you can only recolor the entire grid. In the future you'll be able to change individual cells and assign data to them for use in the scripting system or turn them off to make holes for stairs or pits. But for right now, those with time can just make multiple smaller grids. The parenting system is quite simple. It makes it easy to set up an alchemy table or bookshelf and then move the whole thing around. It's as easy as dropping one item on another. It parents automatically. The only caveats to its use right now is that the parent hierarchies are only saved in a map file, not the template item. We hope to have this resolved soon and give players the power to save anything from a single NPC or a bookshelf to a pre-made tavern or a sky battleship. The Wisp settings are pretty self-explanatory, a color and a display name. I don't have the shaders working how I want to right now, and a side effect of that is that if you change your color to black and the alpha to zero, the Wisp disappears. Could be useful for a DM sometimes, uh, might leave it in. All of the connected players and their Wisp colors show up over here. The plan is to make it so you can reorder this list by drag and drop and add dummy entries for monsters or NPCs. This would make it work as a sort of turn order or initiative tracker device. This little zombie guy was whipped up by our artist and is fully set up with a tinting system. You can use him with the mini paint system with the graphic Monby and the material Monby. I would recommend just pulling out the monster from the tabletop templates in the upper left corner. It comes with a dais to make it easier to pick up and click on. And scripting. This is the big one. Since the beginning, the tabletop items in Aegis Online have had a spot for a script to go. The scripting system doesn't work exactly how we want it right now, but it does work. So let's get into too much detail about it. That's going to be the rest of the video. Uh, if you like what you see so far, check out Easter Egg Productions on Patreon, Facebook, and Twitter. We would love you to follow us and see our future developments. In the default campaign folder, there is a folder called Scripts. And inside there is testmini.py. Open it up with your favorite text editor. I'm going to use Notepad++. And this is the script that runs for the mini. Now, I'm not going to assume that you know anything about programming, so if you do know stuff about programming, this might seem really basic and too basic for you. Uh, but this is supposed to help some other people out that may not know what's going on. So right here at the top, it says class testmini. So class means it's a type of thing called testmini. Just like you, in an RPG, would have a class fighter. And then down here you would describe all the different types of things a fighter can do. And then you would make an instance of a fighter as your character. And that's what we do here. We make an instance of test mini. And then it specifically will do certain types of things. So, once it's made here, once it's set up, and then called on a miniature inside, Aegis Online calls this function right here. That's what these are. The def and then the purple text. Initialize, button attack, attack, take damage. These are the functions that it can call that do stuff. The first one it calls by default after it loads up is initialize, which gets a reference to itself because uh, it's like, hey, I'm the one doing this. This is my thing. And then an item. And this item, Aegis Online gives it, which is a reference 
to its tabletop item. So it actually has this thing in here. And this lets it reference and get all of the stats over here and a bunch of other functions that'll be really helpful when we're coding it up. So it gets a reference to itself, or the item, and then itself. And then it does this context menu function. Now these are registering different context menu functions, like a right click menu, this is context menu, and Aegis Online has that functionality as well. See Gregnar, now we have attack, move, get coin, animation reset. If you go back to Notepad++, you can see we have attack, move, get coin, and animation reset. So for attack, what we're doing is we're saying it, we're using what's called a string, which is what we do for text in programming. We put it in these uh, quotation marks, and that's how we do uh, text. And then we give it a uh, second thing of text, button attack, which is going to be the function that it's going to call when we click that button. So when we click the button, we then call button attack, which has a reference to itself because we want it to be us. It's doing it to this instance of test menu. So we have this long thing here, which sets a next click function, which means the next time we click somewhere, it's going to do something. And what it's going to do is what we put right here. So we're setting it all up as a string, and it's a TTI plus the number here, the number of our keynet ID, which is how we identify ourselves across the network. And we're turning it into a string, because it needs to be a string here. So self, my TTI, my keynet ID, and then attack. And then mouse hover. So mouse hover is a special keyword. When it gets put in to the next click function, when you click, it puts in to mouse hover whatever your mouse is over. So here, what our mouse will be over when we click is our target, what we want to attack. And then that, most important thing, will be sent across to the network to everybody. So it puts in which mini you're attacking, which mini is attacking, and then tells everybody who's connected what's going on so that they can all do it and stay on the same page. So let's uh, follow this and see where it goes. So we have attack, and we have attack down here. So it has these parameters up here, which is what's in these parentheses, which uh, is what it uses to do stuff. So we have our self again, and we didn't put in self over here, but that's fine. It's kind of assumed when you do something dot attack. So self dot attack or self.myTTI, which we established up there, set it as a variable, so it's a thing we have. So here for attack, we make a variable of damage, and then we go access our stats, combat, attack, and our melee bonus. So if we go back over to Aegis really quick, we pull this out, so we have combat, attack, and melee bonus, so this should be two for Gregnar. And we're putting it somewhere just so we can hold it in case anything else changes it. We have our own, we have it ourselves. And then we do a couple animation calls. We set ourselves to non-combat, to false, so we are in combat. And then we have the use, set it to true, because we're going to do an animation, which when we're in combat mode will be to attack. And then we use our defender, that's what we did up here. We have our defender, and we call his take damage, and then give him the damage that we got up here. And we'll follow that in a second, but right now we'll finish it off by using a float note, which is little floating pieces of text. I'll go into more about that in, a de in a later. And then we do a console command for fam, sfx, and our attack sound. So we have that as attack. And we called in here for the defender to take damage. So all up until now, the attacker was doing stuff. Now the defender will actually run their own function, and they're a separate instance, so that code will go somewhere else. So here we have the defender, who would be taking damage. They have reference to themselves, and then the amount of damage they're going to take. So right now we use this log function, which just logs it out into an output file, which uh, you can check for debugging. There's the old HP, which again we grab from our, st our stats. So we go to combat, hit points, which again will be the same as the stats you would access in Aegis Online. And then you do your new HP, which is the old HP minus the damage and then you set it. So that's self my TTI, because the tabletop item is setting its stat, and it has a stat callback. Now by using stat callback instead of this equals thing, this makes sure that the new stat is set sent to everybody on the network. So now we're setting our combat hit points to the new value, the new HP. 
And then we're going to do some if-else statements, good old conditional programming. Now, if you're new to programming, uh, it's just we uh, it's just like spoken English. If new hit points is less than or equal to zero, um, we're just going to die. It's a pretty beautifully eloquent self dot die. Pretty straightforward. And then we're going to send up a little floaty note, say we died. But if that's not true, so if your new hit points is lower than zero, lower than or equal to zero, do this. Otherwise, or else, we're going to send in log, ouch, that hurt. And then we're going to do self.myTTI, make a float note, tell us how, many, how much damage we just took. We're going to do a console command for uh, getting hit. And we're going to animate a little bit of pain. There's a pain animation kind of built in right now. And up here, if we die, so this is die, we just do a little log. Hey, we died. How sad. Play a little death, and then have, we, uh, we have a death animation. I'll show you that in a bit. And so that's the path it takes when you do an attack. And that's sent to everybody around the network, which keeps everybody nice and synced up. So we have these other functions here. We have a move one. Uh, it's not the most beautiful of movement, but it does work, and it syncs up across the network. So that's the same type of thing. We're registering the function, or the button. We want to make a button called move, and we're giving it the function button move. So we go down here to button move, and this is doing the exact same character instance next click function, giving it the uh, tabletop items uh, reference, the number, and then calling the move, and we're setting in cursor position. Now this is just like mouse hover, where it's a special keyword that's going to be replaced. So it'll be replaced with the position of where we clicked when we clicked for our next click function. And then it will call that over the network to all the other ones to make the move to that position. So we have move, which takes in, of course, ourself, and then the position. And we log, called the movement command, and we're going to set the animation to idling false, so we're moving. And then we're going to use the tabletop items set down function, which takes in an X, a Y, and a Z, and then sets the rotation, which utilizes Celtic magic. Go ahead, Google that. And then we set it to uh, grid zero, which this is where you set the parent of what it's set on. And uh, currently, I don't have a keyword set up to kind of get that and send it through the network, but I'll be able to set that up short, shortly. And then our next function here is get coin. And we're just going to call the function coin. So pretty easy. So all the way at the bottom here, we have our nice function coin. And we're going to do a float note. So now I'm going to talk about how these float notes work. So these are the kind of floating text thing. And let me uh, go show you that here. So if I select Gregnar, right click, and press get coin, you can see it causes a little piece of floating text above his head. You can zoom out, you can see it easier. One gold. Get coin. Pretty nice. It's a, kind of an RPG staple at this point. And uh, the way you set that all up is it's a, another function. It's a set up elsewhere. It's part of Aegis Online, or part of the tabletop item. And our first parameter here is a string. And it can also use some rich text stuff. So we can do stuff like open up these brackets, say, hey, the color is going to be yellow. And then the text, one gold. And then that's the end of the thing that's colored. So that's the text. That's the first uh, parameter there. And then we have a floating point number. So it's got a, a decimal, which can move around, float, float around. And that is how long it's going to move. And then we have how long it's going to linger after it's finished moving, and then we have how much X and Y it's going to move. So this one doesn't move left or right, and it goes straight up. So we can run that one more time. Get coin, kind of goes up, slows down, and then disappears. And then after that, we make a variable called gold, and then we check to see if we have a variable or a stat called gold. And if we do, we're going to take gold that we set up here, and we're going to set it to however much gold we have right now. So just like before when we we're doing damage, we want to grab a reference, keep it somewhere for a little bit, and then modify it, and then put it back. So that's what we're going to do. So if we had gold already, we're going to put it in there. Otherwise, we had our gold at zero, and then we added one. That's what the plus equals does. It takes this and automatically adds whatever you put over here in there. So plus equals one. So one more gold. And then we do the stat to call back again. And we're going to do the stats for gold, same one we pulled it out right there. And we're going to put in our gold right there, which is the number. And then we're going to play a little sound 
which is the uh, coin pickup sound, which I have the, the sound recording on that muted so you couldn't hear it, but you'll be able to mess with that on your end once you get the game. And that's how we pick up a coin. And it should have should have worked out, and the, of course the stat callback synchronizes it across the network, so if we go back over here, select Gregnar, and go to the bottom, There it is. He's got five gold. And then the last one is to reset the animation. And that was because I was having a few bugs in it, so and I wanted to make sure you'd be able to reset it in case it was doing weird stuff, because uh, currently the uh, move, if I have a move, he just keeps walking forever. So animation reset. So let's have these guys fight. And I'll turn on the sound recording. Might be a bit loud, so I apologize for that. I'm just going to have them duke it out. So it's like Gregnar, have him attack. See, he got hit. He hit uh, Flabron. He took two damage. So you have Flabron selected. And have him attack back. And you can see now they're in that combat stance, so they're kind of moving around and stuff. And uh, you probably want that to have go away over time. Uh, but you can't just do that at the moment, so just do animation reset and they go back. And nothing is reset over here because this is all stored outside the scripting system. So we got Flabron, and we'll just have him keep fighting and see what happens. We got Gregnar, attack, attack, attack. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. attack. Here we go. And have him attack. Boom. Oh, Ragnar died. Yeah, so that's the death animation there. You can see that we had that set to be slow, and it goes up, and you see it's black and a little bit thicker. And that's because in that one, we had bold. So that's the B right here. It's a lot like HTML tags and stuff. So if you're familiar with that, it would work there. But bold. My item name died. And then it takes five seconds to move, then it lingers for five seconds for a total of ten, and it moves up a hundred, which is more than the other one. So, And uh, currently, you can uh, keep attacking the dead. <coughs> Poor Gregnar. All right. Well, that's pretty much everything with uh, how the new scripting system works. Uh, you can modify it. Uh, currently, only the tabletop items can have a script on them, uh, but you should be able to get all kinds of functionality out of that. You can add in more logic in there, so you can have actually like types of damage reduction, or uh, resistances, or ablative armor, uh, all the kinds of stuff you'd want. Uh, of course, that would take a lot of work, but hey, that's that's the plan. I wanted to use this to play with my friends and automate it, so we could have like a bunch of dudes running around and have all that great fun but not have to deal with a little bit of the tedium, which others might find fun, but I also needed to play with my friends from across the uh, country, so that's why we're making this. All right, well, if you liked what you see, if you'd like to try it out, uh, please check us out on Patreon. $10 or more supporters will be able to download this and uh, share it with their friends so that they'll be able to uh, play it. So you can give it to as many friends as you want. It's perfectly fine. Uh, there's actually, if you click on the logo down here, that would take you to the Patreon site. And we're also on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Twitch. We also do stream on Twitch from time to time. So feel free to check us out in any way. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, don't die.